You mentioned Steve, but that was uh, Steve Hewitt, right? So he was the CEO of Gymshark and he ended up joining your board and investing in D. Louise. So how did that happen? Do you yeah, no, it's a it's an interesting story. Steve uh, has been in the business about a year now. Um, and how it came about. So at the time, I was very confident that I could take the brand to probably the level we are now, mm -hmm. um, say 10 million pound turnover. But it gets more difficult, especially when you're relying on paid acquisition, because Obviously, your customer acquisition cost goes up as you continue to scale. And I never understood like how these brands, particularly say Gymshark is a great example, like how are they doing? You're looking at their year on year growth, they go from like 100 to 200 million. I'm like, I can't do that. I don't mm. have the, I don't possess the skill set to do that. And I'm not sure how they are. Um, at the time, I was working uh, on another business with a guy who, who used to work at Gymshark. And I said, like, I would constantly ask him questions like, I must have asked him a thousand questions about <laughs> well, what, how do they communicate internally or every, everything you can imagine I asked. Um, and then I said to him, right, you need to get me a meeting with someone um, from Gymshark, someone senior who can just explain to me or, or come jump into my position how I was just worried about, say, the future of the brand, how we can build this properly. And he, he was looking on LinkedIn. He was like, well, obviously anyone who was at Gymshark in that sort of golden period uh, knew Steve. He was there from 4 million to 400 mm. um, and a huge part of their success. And he was like, well, Steve's actually formed a um, advisory company called Fanau. Um, so Steve ultimately started with uh, four other employees from Gymshark. He sorted, sorted well, created an advisory company. What they ultimately do is they advise small business owners and Steve's very uh he gives a lot to charity so basically a huge part of their revenue which we you pay them in fees so they advise you um but then they give that money so you can really see where your money's going so he told me well they've they've launched this and i was like right perfect uh, how do we get in i think at the time we were turning over like four or five million pounds and it said are you turning over 10 million pound plus in the application form obviously you just lie mm. say yes um had a call with with someone prior to meeting steve and Call went very well and I explained like we're actually at this level, but I know we're going to be there soon. Mm. Um, and then we we paid the fee to have a sort of, he calls it his, his North Star session. Um, but so, yeah, then we met with Steve and he, we worked with him on a, on a good few sessions trying to understand the brand. He loved the brand. He loved the story, um, believed in the business model. And I think it was his third investment um, since leaving Gymshark. Mm. I think it's worth its weight in gold doing something like that, because like you said, it's very good that you were able to identify that, you know, you weren't maybe able to take the brand to the levels that you wanted to. I think a lot of people sometimes struggle to kind of put that ego aside. Oh, yeah. It's worth its weight in gold because you were able to identify that, seek help from the right person who then fell in love with the brand and is able to take you, you know, to double, maybe even triple that this year. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. And it's something which isn't <clears throat> talked about well enough is when people are... So when you don't know how to do something, first of all, we're not trying to do something with the brand which has never been done before. So that someone, first of all, I think it would be unrealistic to assume that someone knows and there are multiple different ways you can get to what we would consider success being huge growth and, and getting to where we want to get to. Um, but then there also needs to be a weight on who are you going to take advice from? Because you see people, mm -hmm. they'll go to the whole market and they'll I lost their dad. I lost their yeah. grand. People who've got no experience. So then they and they almost weight all of those opinions evenly. Yeah. When actually I think that is totally incorrect. So what my theory was, and it still is, is like, well, who can I find who's say been on that journey? Um, and Steve had obviously been there. He's got a huge amount of experience. Like we needed some grey hairs. Like what are the battle scars he's had, which mm. we can try avoid. Um, and obviously it gives you a whole new perspective on that. Returns is just one thing, but on, on a million different things. Um, and then once I sort of found that Steve maybe potentially was that person, it also then gets important, like, can you communicate well with them? Like, do you enjoy spending mm. time with them? Fortunately, did. Steve's an, an absolute incredible guy. He's done incredible things with the business. Um, and then obviously it seemed like a right fit. Funny story at the time is I had a feeling he was going to invest um, or at least offer to invest. We weren't looking for capital. Um, fortunately, we've been profitable since starting the brand. Um, and I said to to Liv, so I think in this meeting, he's going to say he wants to invest in to do do it. So I just got the mm. impression he was sort of digging under the bonnet with stuff and setting us up, whatever. And I said, so what are we going to say? Um, and we both decided previously, like, it probably seemed like a good idea, mm. um, give away a, a very small amount of equity. Um, and she was like, yes. And I was like, well, what do you tell someone when uh, you want to make them want it even more? 
And then I'm like, she's like, what, what? And I was like, we've got to tell him no. And she's like, what? <laughs> so obviously the meeting came. Fortunately, he, he did offer or said that he would be interested in it. Would we be interested? I said no. Yeah. Um, but obviously knew that would stress string on things. We would end up with a better deal. So it's uh, it worked out quite well. That's brilliant. I'll tell you what, I don't think I would have had the, not the guts to do it but I think I'd have been so excited about that opportunity that I probably wouldn't have thought it through and I would have been like living just gone yeah let's do it yeah. but to take a moment pause and actually think about it from a business perspective um you know hats yeah. off to you well yeah. well done